do you reckon we should just reveal what we're putting in this S15? Because I'm actually not going to be able to wait anymore. I've been three nights going, what is he thinking? What is he going on with? <laughs> well, you see, like we obviously can do things for the, the classes, but I want to do something for the masses. Alright boys and girls, it is another Drift Games vlog, a very exciting one. You've been waiting for it since the last episode. We're going to talk today about what engine we're putting in the S15. It's loaded up on the trailer, we're with Wayne, we're heading down to Group D to see Darren. I don't know what engine conversion we're doing, Josh doesn't know what engine conversion. Does Wayne know what engine conversion? Nobody knows. So we're going down there today, we we're basically handing our car to the mad scientist Darren McNamara, who's going to tell us what he's going to do to it. And at this point in the video, you don't know, and we don't know. So we've got about a two hour drive to go. I'm excited to find out. Um, he said it's a world first, so I, I have no idea. Do you have any guesses? It's not an RB, it's not a 1J, it's not a V8. I don't know. I only know the simple engines anyways that everyone knows, so my guess is useless. I'll put it this way. You know with Darren that it's not going to be straightforward. Nothing is straightforward. Never. Uh, Darren said, I want a challenge. And that sounds either frightening that or... Sound, that's frightening. Very frightening. Or exciting. We'll go with exciting. No, fr everything he does is exciting, but it's still frightening. But to be fair, he did pull off those three cars for LZ Festival, so I don't doubt him anymore. So let's go down the road. Let's just get, let's get it over with and see what this engine is. Don't, don't tell me you're going to be like the young one. No, 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 We're going to be in close proximity today. Steady on when you go into second gear, okay? Oh, hey, hey, steady on there. I will, yeah. So we are here at Group D. The 15 has made it. Wayne has not lost it on the way off the back of the trailer. And we're going to take it off. We're going to roll it into the workshop and we're going to talk to Darren. If you're in Ireland and in the market for a used car, we recommend coming here to moorefieldmotors.ie. They've got an amazing showroom, everything from SUVs to performance cars, to practical cars, to first time buyers. They even have Mark II Escort Rally Car. Although, to be fair, this isn't for sale. But it does show that they're into motorsport and they're into their cars, which means they can pass that knowledge on to you. They also do full finance deals and can source it if they don't have it. Get on to moorefieldmotors.ie. They have new cars every day. Tell them we sent you. I see my car is here, now in with the bonnet open. We've got two covered engines, I don't know what they are. Darren, how are you, buddy? Hello, everyone. So back from LZ Fest, all the cars ran, everything's great. And then I decided I wanted to put a rotary in my S15, and you talked me out of it because you said it's boring, and mm -hmm. you're bored, I think, because you've just finished all these cars. You want to do something different, right? Yeah, I like challenging myself, getting something different. I have put rotaries in plenty, I have put plenty of rotaries. Um, but I've seen it done loads of times. You think it's different, but I've seen it done a good bit. Um, trying to come up with something new is always interesting. So the first thing I was, my first time was putting SO20 Turbo in the car to make it like a fake type ore, which like a lot this? of people, like this, what a lot of people do. But I'm gonna try and do this project a little bit differently than most people would think. I'm actually trying to do this on a budget, which sounds usually like we just go mad and stuff, but yeah. we have to do it things on a budget like everyone else mm -hmm. does. And I'm going, there's no point in just doing something that's cool that doesn't get me anymore. So like, even if I was to buy a full SR20 dressed car like this, mm -hmm. by the time I bought the block, I've bought, because that's an automatic, I've bought all the pedal assembly, I've bought a gearbox, I've put a big turbo on it, I've done all of this. Like, I'm probably 20 grand into making it a spec or. Like, yeah, and it's nothing different. Nobody, it's nobody, will, everyone will just go, Grand. SR20 is hugely overpriced as well at the moment. Now. Like everything, we're really right. And a lot of the reason it's overpriced is because they blow up and people have to replace them and therefore the market gets more expensive. So I understand why we're not doing an SR20. I now understand why we're not doing a rotary. So this one is out. This one is out. <laughs> we're not doing a rotary because it's been done before, even though I kind of like the idea of the rotary. And they blow up too. And they blow too. A lot more right. Then I thought, because I don't know what you're going with, I think you were going towards the V8. Well, 
Although this is a very special V8. Those V8s, those V8s. Those V8s, and this is not one I would like to take Tesco. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, V8 sits in lovely, as you can see. It really does fit in the Sylvia quite nice. This is a very compact V8, but even like an LS is yeah. more, you know, an LS or one UZ would be more optimal, I guess, cheaper. Um, would be the way to go for a street car, but LS has gone very dear. Um, on UZ, when you actually put it in, it's not very powerful. You have to do a lot of things to it. It's disappointing. Yeah. Um, then, of course, they're all automatic and you have to do your gearbox again, and it's going to cost you thousands. And yeah, it's, there's nothing simple. So I don't think a V8 is going to be So I think yeah. I knew that it wasn't a V8 or an S20 because I knew they would be done before. Because you told me it's not been done before. Uh -huh. RB, 2J. Also, I think a problem because they've got too expensive. Everything is too expensive now. To buy yeah. an RB or a 2JZ conversion for that, I still think you're talking 20, 25,000 euro for a nice, clean mm -hmm. setup. And yes, you'll get a bit of power. Yes, you know they'll fit and they'll work. But like, I'm not going to be very excited about it. You're very not going expensive. to be very excited about it. Very expensive. Plus, it's a street car. You know, it's very easy to get carried away with the big six cylinder. Uh, the RB, not so much. I mean, they don't make that much power. A 2J, once you mention a standard 2J block making about 600 horsepower, people are like, oh yeah, let's do that. Because you have to buy only one turbo, one set of injectors, yeah. you know. They go all out and then all of a sudden you have a laggy, very peaky, very powerful road car. And it's not really great, you know, around the 300 horsepower mark. That's, that's, that's what, that was where I wanted to be. So the thing about that I find a challenge is now, I've done engine conversions before. I've never done an engine conversion in a road car, like a street car that I want to drive. I want to drive this car. So I don't want to like cut everything out, tube it and everything goes in, but then you lose all of your practicality, you lose your ABS, you lose your lights, you lose your, all your bits and pieces that make the car actually enjoyable every day, yeah. that it doesn't drive for 20 minutes and you go, great, let's put it away and drive a normal car. Yeah. So this is where we're at with an automatic SR20. This is the slowest setup I've ever been in a Silvia. I think it might be the gearbox doesn't help. Four um, speed, not, like it literally now feels like you're driving just a normal Nissan micro automatic or whatever. So it's, this is going. Yeah. I'm done with SR20s. And, and you're, you're kind of, <laughs> but again, I'm curious. So I know, because I walked in and I said, these are definitely the, the direction we're going. These are the boys. I don't know what this is, but from looking at it on the outside, it doesn't look like a very big engine. So it's not, it doesn't look to me like a, a V8. Four cylinders. Four cylinder. Four cylinders. This car is made for four cylinder. Most cars are made for a four cylinder. So regarding radiator position and intercooler and all that, that will all remain simple and very easy to do. And even an intercooler kit for an S15 will go straight in and be able to be working with this. Hold on, I'm going to hold you down. So it's a four cylinder, but it's not an SR20 that we're putting in the car. I like where we're going with this, but I have no idea what this is. Josh, do you reckon we should just reveal what we're putting in this S15? Because I'm actually not going to be able to wait anymore. I've been three nights going. What is he thinking? What is he going on with? <laughs> Let's look at it. Right, go on. Well, you see, like we obviously can do things for the, the classes, but I want to do something for the masses. What is this? This, this is a Toyota engine, but it's... It's a 3S GE from a... This one is from an MR2. Um, same thing in a Celica. Uh, Hold on, the ones in the back of the MR2 that are on the angle? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because look. You see it at the angle. Ah. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to rear wheel drive for you. Oh, so hold on, this slips in the engine bay like this, in an MR2. Yeah. So you've got to turn it this way. Yeah. We're going okay, to you keep talking because I have no idea what We're going to, it's obviously on its side in the MR2 in the Sleeker. Yeah. We're going to turn it upright. We're going to make you a custom exhaust manifold, custom intake manifold. Um, there's some really nice stuff on this actually. It's an 86 by 86 engine, which is just perfect two liter. Um, yeah, we're going to get it in the exhaust. Turbo, everything is on the same side as your Sylvia. Intake is on the same side. It's going to match up actually quite well. Um, and from there, we're going to put a six-speed Altesa gearbox onto it, which will go straight on. Which is like the six-speed in the Spec R. Five-speed um, Spec R, but... No, but... Nicer? Yeah, it's a, it's a modern gearbox, lovely, six gears. It'll be sweet. We'll turbocharge it. We'll drop the compression in it for you. We'll turbocharge it. We sit in about 300 horsepower all day long. Minimal modifications. This is a 500 euro engine, so. Hold on, no, no, hold on, before we go forward, first of all, so I'm just gonna, re so uh -huh. I like the idea, even though I'm not sure I was on, I, I was on board with it. The minute you turned off the, the tongue, because this looks very unattractive. As an <laughs> it's quite. So it's a cheap engine. It's, but it's a technically a four cylinder Toyota turbo engine. Correct. That we're gonna put instead of a Nissan four cylinder turbo engine in this, we're we able to get 300 horsepower, and maintain everything that's in the car that would have been 
uh, like say ABS and all that stuff to normal. Yeah. So the Silvia will work it's as if it's Romania. normal. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna put a Link ECU on it with a Link ECU street dash on it because I just love the street dash. They're amazing. And Link ECU means we can control everything. And it's still going to be 300 horsepower, which is the perfect amount for this car that I want. I know everyone goes, oh, blah, 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 power figures. No, I just want no. it to be a nice, quick yeah. car that's reliable. Mm. The only problem I have, Darren, is it looks horrendous, as not it? It does. Like, what is going on with this? Is this well, thing? This, this is undressed. It looks a, li oh, okay, okay. a little bit better, but maybe not a whole lot better. But a little bit better. Okay, you know, yeah. So that's undressed. It's actually quite compact when you look at it. It looks like, yeah. You okay. do have two kind of lumps at a, an angled oil cap which is going to look weird we can modify all that if we need to so this is obviously we're not pleased and we're not using nope the, yes you're going to have a regular intake out the side with a chattel body out the front here you're going to have a you're going to have a bottom mounted turbo on this keep your abs and everything so be very similar to an sr20 setup it'll open you out it's two liters as well so all the kind of turbos that you think work on an sr2860 yeah. 2871 all that will work um, this is actually, we'll say, this is the normally aspirated version of a Celica GT4 engine or an MR2 turbo engine. 90% um, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, small differences, um, but it's a 90s Toyota engine. I mean, they're just the best engine ever made. You think of the 2J, you think of the 1UZ tick rod, that's the one everyone wants. They all want like a 1990 Toyota engine. They just made they're things also, to last forever. The most reliable engine. Over-engineered, yeah. yeah. So we will be, uh, this one has got like 10 to 1 compression, which is too high for turbocharging. So we'll drop the compression for you, but the internals will remain the same. None of the turbocharged internals we will be putting in. Wow. We'll be running this as a low compression NA motor with a turbocharger. And we're going to obviously clean it all up and make it look nice and oh, pretty and fancy yeah, yeah. and painted. And I know you like fancy. I do like fancy. <laughs> uh, so, so this is going to be flowers. Weird, well. So when we do this project, someone's going to open up we're going to open up the bonnet of this car and you're going to see a four-cylinder Toyota engine powering yeah. an S15, which, as, am I right in saying no one's ever done this before in an S15? No, I've never seen one. I've never seen a GE go in, certainly. Um, people have messed around with a few GT4 engines and stuff like that before, but not very common in a rear-wheel drive, you know, north-south configuration. Um, and, and just to let people know who are watching this, what I like about this is, so this is going to be an affordable engine swap for people. It's 500 euros for what you see there. And you buy these all day long. So and as I you, said- For this in an SR20, you're talking 3,000 oh, euros? Yeah, SRs are gone through the roof. So like 3,000, 3,500 euros just for this bit? Yeah. And this is 500 euros. So not no, if you build this engine, if you put rods in it, pistons in it, we are building a, a second one as well. Um, uh, camshafts or whatever. This engine will make 450, 500 horsepower. That's crazy. So this, what I love about this project is, because obviously I wanted to do something different, new first mm -hmm. and all that, which is great. And obviously I wanted you to do it because you've done a lot of this custom stuff before. But what I really like about this project, even more than me getting this engine in the car, is that if this works, people can buy this for probably yes. about a quarter of the price of doing an SR20 turbo conversion in a car. Yeah, um, well, we're building a second one, as I said, so you'll get one of these. So there's like two versions. So you're going to yeah. do one we're doing that's a kind of a street one. version, and then one that's high yeah. power. And we're doing a forged one then, and we're putting a CD09 350Z box in it. So okay. that'll take big power, and we'll be doing an adapter plate for that that you can purchase. You can purchase the intake manifold from us, you can purchase the exhaust manifold from us, and you can purchase the engine mounts from us, straight into a Sylvia. Um, so you could, buy a, you could buy a non-turbo Sylvia, and you could put 300 horsepower up to 450 horsepower in it for about a quarter of the price of doing it with the OE Nissan stuff, like or even SR20 with it, whatever. Correct. Yeah. Do you think? So, are you 100% confident in the work? Oh well, the, the engine. I, I'm massively confident about the engine. Like I know, as I said, 90s Toyotas. Yeah. It's going to be reliable. It's going to be strong. Um, at 300 brake unmodified it's going to be sweet all day long so tell me what the challenge is when we get it into the car so obviously you got to take out the sr20 uh -huh. take out the automatic box obviously it has to be manually converted yeah. with the Alteza gearbox Alteza box, yeah. and then where are the other challenges within it is it you said it goes in okay pretty similar it should sit in okay it's a front sump engine so we will be using the standard sump uh, your Sylvia is a front sump as well rear rack so it'll drop in we don't want to modify any of that um, the, so steering stays the same yeah you see, this, this sounds like it actually is a sounds reason. too good to be sounds true. Sounds too good to be true that you <laughs> can put a Toyota. There's going to be a snag. There's going to be somewhere along the line. But if you can put a Toyota four-cylinder turbo in it, get the same power as an SR20 turbo, mm -hmm. and it 
goes straight in most of the way and you can keep most of the Nissan stuff. Yeah. That was like the perfect mix. It's, it's an interesting one. I'm not sure why anyone, it's something I've been working on for a while, trying to come up with something, as I said, you know, <sighs> takes the fun out of it not being able to build these cars anymore and having to yeah. spend 20 25 you know it's nice to have something even i mean this is a beautiful car but something not so beautiful and you're like oh i want a bit of power and i want to have a bit of fun but i gotta spend fifteen thousand to get yeah. an engine into it it's it's just taking the fun out of these cars for us they're becoming more of a collector's car than a fun car and i and i would agree that okay i obviously bought a spec s automatic this is as cheap an s15 as you can buy not cheap though not cheap yeah but it's as cheap as you can buy one of these mm -hmm. They're still affordable at Spec S automatic money. Yeah. And putting an engine in this, I reckon the entire car will cost about maybe 5,000 euro less than an, a Spec R. Yeah. But if you have an issue, you've got a much cheaper engine to fix if anything goes wrong. Which yeah, if you have an issue. But then it's also a toilet engine, so it might be better. Not saying, I'm not getting into that debate now in the it's comments. It's way better than an S automatic. So I like the idea, and the idea for us is to bring the car down to you today, You've got to do obviously some research, some development, yeah. order some parts. So our plan is just, as we get to Christmas, we're going to have everything here to do this project. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make the trip down and we're going to get through it fairly fast and show you guys everything from start to finish. And I'm very excited about it. I know it's going to be a month and a half or so until we get into it. Do um, so you know what? Because it's a world first, because it's reasonably affordable for anybody else to do, yeah. and because you're excited about it and I can see that you're excited oh, about no, it. I am, yeah. Yeah. I'm actually excited about it because as I said it's not just an engine conversion it's something new. Yeah it's so really coming happy. up with something different something new and I've been racking my brain for a while to try and figure this problem out because I do have a lot of cars outside as well that would be really fun projects and stuff but again you just can't do a 300 horsepower conversion on them without spending absolutely loads of money now. True. Everything rear wheel drive is gone crazy. This is about what, a half, a third of the cost of a 4 AGE? I mean, would you believe that at this stage? Of a, wow, of, yeah. It, they're gone through the roof as well. It's crazy. Like, for 130 horsepower, you're going to pay 1,500 euro, you know? Jeez. Things are gone mad in the rear-wheel drive market, and this could we had be to come up with something. Thing. We had to come up with some way of doing this and building fun, cheap projects for people, and this is what we've come up with. I, I love it, I can't wait to see it. So basically, this car is gonna stay here, and the next time this car drives out of here, it's gonna have a four-cylinder Toyota engine, and we're gonna be it taking is. it to the dyno on a Link ECU to see how it's all running. I'm super excited, I hope you guys are excited as well. We told you it'd be a world first, it is a world first, and the mad scientist Darren here at Group D is gonna put it all together. This series is coming in around Christmas time. We wanted to show it to you now because we couldn't keep it under wraps for that long, but I'm super pumped on it. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Four-cylinder Toyota Turbo, 300 horsepower, but maintaining everything that makes this a cool street car. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I can't wait to hear your feedback. See you guys on the next episode.